Hey there people, I'm the blockchainer and I have been involved with F3 security and smart contracts with Solidity for a few months now. Recently I discovered that the demand for our smart contract developers and auditors is much higher than I expected. And since learning Rust has been running my mind for a while, I decided it's time to start. The approach I chose to learn Rust is not going step by step, but I want to go all in directly to understand how to write and audit smart contracts. And since I have Solidity background, I decided that I would start by grabbing a smart contract, retain Solidity, and implementing it in Rust. I had a good experience learning in public as it encouraged me and others to keep pushing for more. So this time, I started to log every single step I took and every single thing I learned about smart contracts with Rust. I didn't prepare any fancy slides or similar. I will be going through my notes and commenting on how I got to those things if needed. Let's start then. So the first thing, I had to install Rust and I got this command from the from the main docs. So just make sure to go here and uh, there will be any other things you might need to install like Xcode and so on and so on. I already had that on my on my laptop so I didn't need it. So yeah, once I run that there was this prompt and I had to select the default installation. If you know more details about it and want to customize it then of course. Then to configure the current shell you can either create a new tab, open a new tab or just run this on your command line and you can just as usual when you install a package just run the Rust C and the version to make sure that the, that the installation uh, has been successful. You can keep your Rust installation up to date with the latest version by running Rust up update but probably if you just install it now it will be the last one. Now then, I mean, then I, I discovered about, uh, since I am going to use VS Code, I, I found this, this extension about Rust Analyzer. And that's basically so that it uh, highlights the, uh, the um, compilation errors and so on. So that it, it detects the Rust language. Next thing, the so-called cargo. When you install Rust with Rust app with the command mentioned above, the toolset includes Cargo. Among others, you can also get Cargo, the Rust package manager, to help download Rust dependencies and build and run Rust programs. There is a Cargo new, and that's basically to create the, um, the project. So, as you can see, it works like with, um, with Solidity. You can open with Foundry or with Hardhat a new project, and it generates some files. In this case, it generates a main.rs, git ignore, and cargo toml. Let's move forward. Now, as I mentioned, I want to start learning Rust by converting a smart contract written in Solidity. So, let's convert the smart contract below to Rust and learn the language as we build it. You may recognize this, this contract is part of the Patrick Collins course that I I used to, to learn Solidity, so I think it's a very good example of a simple smart contract. Now, what's the Rust equivalent of a contract declaration in Solidity? In Rust, there isn't a direct equivalent to Solidity's contract keyword since Rust is a general purpose programming language, whereas Solidity is designed specifically for smart contract development on the Ethereum blockchain. However, when developing blockchain applications in Rust, one typically uses a struct to encapsulate data and an imp or IMPL block to define methods operating on that data, somewhat similar to a Solidity contract. Here's a simplified version of the Solidity smart contract that I, I we have above. Then want to start with the whole the whole translation, the whole conversion, but yeah. So looks different at first, yeah. For sure, it was surprising to not use one keyword, but as it says to to use the struct and the implementation, we can see that the simple storage is the same. And yeah, let's go through my notes. The simple storage is defined as a struct instead of a contract. The store and retrieve methods are defined within the imp block associated with simple storage. We added a new method <coughs> as a constructor which is the common pattern in Rust. We can see it here. It's like the 
it seems like a function because it's like the, the fn, which I understand goes for function, and so on. The pub or pub indicates that the function is public, and this arrow is the equivalent of the so called returns in solid. We can see that in the retrieve one. Now, where are the state variables from Solid in Rust? Because here it's, it, it, it's something that catches my attention. Why it's not at my favorite number? Why it's not in here? As you can notice, my favorite number has been moved from the main block or imp. In Rust, the imp block is used for defining methods associated with a practical struct, enum, or trait. These methods can operate on instances of the struct or enum and can access and modify their fields. Now, here are some of the elements placed outside the imp block. There are struct and enums definitions that the actual definition of structs and enums are placed outside. Also, function definitions that are standalone functions that are not associated with a particular struct or enum go outside. Constant definitions like from other languages I'm familiar with, like Kotlin, it's uh, sometimes some constants are just placed outside the class, so this seems um, not a bit different but similar. Then the use statements or imports are also placed outside. And some model definitions, which I'm still not 100% what is it about, but we will figure out together. And here is what goes inside the imp block, the method definitions, which are functions that can operate on an instance of the struct or enum and are defined inside the imp block. They are they always have a self or ampersand self, mode self parameter which refers to the instance they are operating on and associated function definitions that are related to the struct or enum but do not operate on an instance of it are defined inside the imp block but do not take a self parameter. The new function which is often used as a constructor, we've seen it above is a common example of an associated function. I'm wondering if there's actually any more usage for associated function definitions, but let's see, I guess, yeah. Which takes me to the next question related when I saw that I was wondering how and when to use the mute self, self or self, like ampersand self and so on. Because I saw that the here in the functions, as you can see, some have that, the other one does it, then I can see self-use here, and so on. So it was a bit confusing. I want to know why things happen, right? So let's go back to that. So in Rust, self, ampersand self, and mute self are used within method signatures in an imp block to specify how the method accesses the data of the struct it's associated with. Here's a breakdown, wanted to define each of them and want to use it and how. Self, the ownership transfer. When a method has self as its first parameter, it takes ownership of the instance. This means that the instance can no longer be used after the method is called unless the method returns the instance. How to use it? This is typically used for methods that transform self into something else and where, and where it makes sense for the original instance to be consumed. Now this was, when I read this, it was not totally clear. So I keep digging and I want to show you more, more details about it. So I want to show you now both how self be, how would self be used and what would be the equivalent in solidity. So yeah, I got this code and it is passed here in the, in the parameter. And as it says, the self will be dropped at the end of this method. Now in Solidity, the equivalent to raw self is this. However, Solidity doesn't have the concept of consuming a contract instance like in Rust, but let's say it's, it's more or less applicable. And uh, please, if anyone is listening to this and knows differently, it will be highly appreciated by everyone to just correct anything that I might not be correct about. Now, I hope providing these kind of examples is, is helping understand it. So let's continue. Now the ampersand self. It's an immutable borrow. When a method has ampersand self as its first parameter, it borrows the instance immutability. This means that the method can read the data in an instance 
but cannot modify it. Usage this is used for methods that need to access the data of the instance, but do not need to modify it. To me, it sounds like a getter, but let's see it because it's used in the retrieve. I'm wondering if it's uh, more used in other as I say, getters. So this is uh, an example that we get from the contract above, above. Yeah, with the retrieve and, and the ampersand self. Now the ampersand mute self is uh, mute stands definitely for mutable. So the mutable borrow. When a method has this uh, as its first parameter, it borrows the instance mut mutability. This means that the method can read and modify the data in the instance. How to use it? it is used for methods that need to modify the instance. As we can see with the store function, and it's used the mute self. Because we're passing a, a parameter that is favorite number, which we are going to use to override the existing one. Okay, at this point, when I was uh, this far, then I was speaking with some people on the uh, Discord and so on. And yeah, I, I was wondering how, if I was writing properly the, the code in Rust with, with a plain Rust, I was wondering because I was doing some research and I found, I don't know, some, some different frameworks and so on. So I want to make sure to not lose my time with that. So I made this small parenthesis here. So yeah, as I'm writing, I've just discovered that the best way to continue learning to write smart contracts with Rust is to base it on a specific chain. And after some recommendations, I will be basing the smart contracts to work with near protocol. Other, other chains, as I heard, it's uh, an Arbitrum, it's, it's uh, also with Stylus, and for Polkadot with Ink. But yeah, let's let's stick. I heard good things about it, and and anyways, it does. It's not meant to be too different or complicated to switch from one from one another. So yeah, hence it it seems it I need to add something to my in my terminal. So yeah, this is the command I run on the terminal. And yeah, then let's go on. So. I had some compilation errors, of course, like usual, and the solution was to add the the right dependencies, as we mentioned. The, I showed you when when we did the cargo new and the name of the project when we created. There is this file, the cargo dot tom file, and I added this. These are the at this time that I'm recording this are the latest versions. You can always double check uh, which are the the versions at the moment you are you are adding it so that you can add the last ones or the latest ones so this is how my simple storage RAS file looks like at the moment with integration to near protocol don't get scared but it's changed a bit i also uh, included the add person function that was not in the simple the sim simple version i added before so yeah this is where I'm at the moment. This is what I raised. I got to this so far. I actually was investigating about all these things and those imports and so on. So I will continue in the, well, I will continue investigating. And of course, after I got some important updates and some, some nice, some nice, um, resources, I will, I will keep uh, sharing with, with you guys so far. Well, I don't want to. Die, but yeah, th there are some things like this, which to me it sounds a bit like the pragma in solidity. But yeah, so far I've got this. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions because I will research about it and I can add it in the in the next uh, sessions that we have for for learning Rust from solidity smart contracts. Okay, guys, so this is it so far. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like it. Uh, I'm also sharing some small updates on the go on my Twitter account, so you can follow me there. Uh, yeah, let's learn together, guys. And go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get the latest updates on this journey. And also like this video, please, so that we can make it reach more people. Take care.